Hey everyone, and welcome back. What if I told you that controlling NeoPixel and NeoPixel-like LEDs can be as simple as three wires, an ESP Family Micro, this is an ESP32, and visiting a website and clicking a couple of links? Well, it's true. The magic and the simplicity comes in way of the WLED project by AirCookie. This is a fantastic website which allows you to install all the software you need directly on your ESP32 or 8266 using the browser. I strongly recommend you go onto this website, obviously linked in the description, and have a read around. But for those of you who aren't into reading, I'll just guide you through the process right now. The actual WLED installer has its own website, linked in the description, and all you have to do is to plug in your ESP8266 or 32. I'm using the ESP32 in this video. And we're going to hit install and follow the instructions. So here we go. And here comes a pop-up. And there we go. CP2102 USB to UART bridge controller on COM9. So we know that my ESP32 is on COM9. I'll hit connect. It'll connect by itself. And I'll say install WLED. Yep. Everything's good. This is a fresh out of the packet ESP32. It's just going to go and erase the blinky sketch that comes stock with my ESP32s, and then it'll go install WLED. And installation is complete. Just follow the instructions. Now we need the Wi-Fi credentials. This is to control it over Wi-Fi. So just type in your credentials here. And here we go. Now all you have to click is visit the device and you'll be opened in a new tab with the IP of your new device. And so if PC mode is not clicked, it's going to look a little bit weird. So make sure you click PC mode. And there we go. We have everything connected here. There's a few places I want to direct you to at the very start, though, and that is in the config. And this is where it looks kind of like a mobile thing. Um, you go LED preferences. Um, and then you just scroll down here and you pick your type of WS28112 or whatever RGB LED you have, your color order, and how many in the matrix. So this matrix that I have plugged in will have 256. And you also pick the GPIO that you're going to use on the SP32. I'm choosing uh, GPIO number two. And that's pretty much it for now. So I'm going to hit save. And then your LEDs should light up orange. Now you have to make sure that you're not overstressing your power supply. So if you've got a big LED matrix like I have here, make sure you give it its own five volts and ground and also make sure to link the ground of your LED matrix to your ESP32. Next, make sure that your digital pin is going to the D in of your LED matrix and you should be greeted with a wonderful orange color. Now this is really it if you want to start experimenting, but I'm going to guide you through a couple other things I find interesting. First and foremost, this list of pre-selected animations are pretty awesome. There's a couple that I prefer, like for example, the rainbow animation really gives you a good idea of what the LED matrix can really do. With that, you can also move uh, the effect intensity and the effect speed to suit your purpose. Over here in the segment sec section, you can actually add segments or modify the one that you're actually using. Uh, reverse the direction, mirror the effect, whatever you want. You can even rename it if you'd like. As well as there's a brightness slider all over on this side, which you can adjust the brightness in general. When you find something you like, like this rainbow preset, you can always hit the plus create preset, use current state, give it a name, and save it to an ID like so. And then you go and you find other presets you like. This one, for example, is pretty cool. And you hit create preset, give it a name, and so on. Once you have your preset set, you can set a playlist and you can set it up to whatever you would like. 
like so, but then you add your playlist entries. So you can give it a duration. So 10 seconds is pretty decent, but we'll go five seconds. And then you just add more. And then when you save that as a playlist, when you power off and then power on, um, this will actually play, which is pretty neat. The other thing you can do is just set it to a solid color. This is a good way to know if you have your red, green, and blues in order. So you just hit the color picker wheel and you should see the color pop up on the display. It's actually quite impressive how many colors you can get. And what's fun too is you can hit the R and get a random color. You also have random cycling colors, which you can add to the other effects. There's a couple other cool things too. You can actually add a little timer. So 60 minutes, uh, it'll actually dim and turn off after 60 minutes. And let's not forget, these exact same effects are available from your phone just by visiting this local IP up top. And so that's it really. It's really that simple. There's nothing else to say. Um, I hope that you have an ESP32 or A266 laying around in your junk bin right now and you go out and try this terrific project. And I actually have a finished project that uses this and that's why I wanted to introduce this project to you right now. And so I really hope this software brings you as much joy as it does me. Thanks for watching.